Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to include your primary menu bar in your Divi page design. So this is the final design we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so in order for us to do this tutorial, we are going to need a few things. So firstly, we're going to use some custom CSS and also an image which you can download in the post which I'll link to in the show notes below. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here is to go and customize our primary menu bar. So what you want to do is to come over here to appearance, customize, click on primary navigation and then go to primary menu bar. So first of all, let's set our height to 100, our text size to 18, letter spacing to minus one. And then for our text color, we're going to come over here and click this area here. And uh, this is going to be a solid hexadecimal value. So I'm just going to paste it here. And that's going to be a dark gray. And then next we need to add our active link color. So we're going to scroll down here, click on this area here and paste our active link color. And then for the background color, this is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag this slider down a little bit so I can get these brackets here on the top. So I'm going to highlight what's between the brackets and then paste my values like that. Next, we're going to go to the drop down menu background color. And uh, this needs to be set at white. So if yours is not set at white, you just need to make sure that it's set to white. Okay, so the next stage now is to add our background image. So we need to go to our general settings. So I'm going to click here back and then click on general settings. Click on background. And then here where it says background image, we need to uh, click on select image. So my image is already in the media library. So if you haven't done so, you need to go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below and then upload that image that we have. All you have to do is to right click, save it to your desktop and then upload it onto your media library. So I'm going to select my image here and click choose image. Uh, making sure that uh, stretch background image is selected and also over here on the background position, this needs to be set as fixed. Next, we're going to hit publish. And then we're going to close this. Now we need to make our primary menu bar overlap our page design. So to do this, we need to add a bit of CSS code. So let's come over here and create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So I'm just going to call this header menu. And then click on use Divi Builder. We're going to go straight to the visual builder. And then for now, I'm just going to click on start from scratch. Okay, so now that we have our image here in the background, I'm just going to close this. And then I'm going to come all the way down here to the bottom because we need to add our CSS code. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon because this enables us to access our page settings. Okay, so over here, we're going to go to the advanced tab, custom CSS and paste our CSS code in here. So for now, we're going to save and then we're going to add a brand new section. So I'm just going to hit publish here. Right, so let's add our background section. So I'm going to click this plus button. I'm just going to click on regular here and then close this. So what we need to do here is to add our background color. So I'm going to add my RGBA value for my background. So I'm going to click here on the gear icon to access my section settings, click on background. And then I'm going to click this plus button to add my background color. Now this is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag this down a little bit and then I'm going to paste my values between these brackets. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So you can see here, I've added a bit of transparency and now the color is appearing here on my header area. And that's really cool. Next, we need to add some uh, margins to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to click here on design spacing. So I'm going to activate my chain so I can add my value here and that will be applied to both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to add hundred pixels. And then for the left and right, it's going to be 60 pixels. Next, I'm going to add a top padding of 135 and a bottom padding of zero. Next, we're going to add some rounded corners. So I'm just going to come over here to border and then I'm just going to add 30. So the next thing we need to do now is to add a top border. So I'm going to come over here and select um, my top border here. And uh, of course, for this to show, we need to add the width. So I'm going to come over here and add 35 and we need to add the color. So I'm going to click here on the eyedropper tool and just add my color like that. Right, so finally, to finish this off, we're going to come over here to the box shadow and add a very subtle box shadow. So the option I'm going to choose is this one. And then I'm going to come over here to the blur strength and set this to about 61. And then next on the uh, shadow spread strength, I'm going to set this to minus 13. 
and then I'm going to save. Next, I'm going to add my rows. So I'm going to click this plus button here to add my rows. And in this row, we're going to add two columns. So now we need to make some adjustments to this row. So I'm going to come over here to my row settings, click design, and we're going to make the size of this row full width. So I'm going to select uh, make full width, equalize column height. And then next, we need to make some adjustments to our spacing. So I'm going to come over here and uh, we're going to add a top padding of 250, bottom padding of 200. So while we're here, we might as well add our values for our mobile devices. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, click on the tablet tab. So here for the top, I'm going to add 50. And this is going to be the same for the smartphone as well. And for the bottom padding, I'm going to add 100. And for the smartphone, this needs to be set at 50. Okay, now let's move on to our column one padding. So we're going to add 50 to the top. And then for the desktop and the smartphone, we're going to set this to zero. So I'm going to click this little icon again, click on the tablet tab. And then we're going to set this to zero and zero for the smartphone. Great. Right, so for now we're done. Let's go ahead now and add all our content. So over here in the first column, we're going to add a text module. And in the text module, we are going to add a heading text. So I'm going to search for my text module and select it. So over here in the uh, content area, I'm going to add my title, highlight it, and give this a value of heading 1. Next, we're going to come over here to the design tab. And uh, we're going to change our heading font. So I'm going to come over here to heading text, making sure H1 is selected. We're going to click here on this drop down and we're going to set our font. And this is going to be Poppins. I'm going to select it. Next, we need to change the font weight. So over here, it's by default, it's set to regular. I'm going to click this drop down and set it to medium. Now it's time to add our heading size. So I'm going to come over here and set it at 120. Okay, so I'm going to click here on this little icon and set our sizes for the tablet and the smartphone. So over here on the tablet, we're going to set this at 80. And then on the smartphone, we're going to set this at 58. Next, we're going to save. And then we're going to add a description text here just below our heading. So I'm going to click this plus button, search for my text module. And then I'm going to select it. So over here on design, I'm going to click here on text and our default font needs to be set to Poppins. So I'm just going to search for it. Our text font weight is regular, so that's fine. And then our text size here needs to be set at 20. And for the tablet and smartphone, this needs to be set at 15. So I'm going to come over here, add my value. And that's going to be the same for the smartphone. Okay, great. So I'm going to come back over here to the desktop. For the line height, I'm going to set this at 2 EM. And then next, I'm going to add my top and bottom margin. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find spacing. And then I'm going to add my 50 pixels. But before I do that, I just need to activate this chain so that my value gets applied both to the top and the bottom. Great. And then we're going to save. Next, we're going to add a button module. So I'm going to come back over here, click this plus button, and click on my button. Now, in order for us to make some customizations to this button, we need to activate the custom style. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on button, and then click yes to use custom styles for button. Right, so let's start off with our text color. So for our text color, this needs to be set at white. And then over here for our button background, I'm going to click the second tab because we need to add a gradient. So I'm going to click this plus button, add my first color, add my second color. Our gradient direction needs to be set at 137. Now, moving on, our button border width needs to be set at 0. And then for the border radius, we can set this at 40. Now, if you want to use this, the exact same values as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. All right, so for our button font, so this needs to be set at Poppins. And this is the uh, default one, so that's fine. But if you haven't set yours as uh, Poppins, as the default, you just need to click here on this drop down and choose the Poppins font. Okay, so moving on, we need to um, make sure that our body font weight is set to regular. And then for our font style, we're gonna, we need to set this to uppercase. So the next thing we need to do is to add our margin and also our padding. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the bottom, click on spacing. So the first thing we need to do is to add our margin to the bottom. So I'm going to set it at 100. And then for our smartphone and tablet, we're going to set it at 20. So I'm going to click here on this little tab. And then I'm going to set this at 20. 
And that should be the same for the smartphone, which is great. Right, so the next thing we need to do now is to add our padding to the left and the right. So I'm going to activate this chain because the value needs to be the same. So it's going to be 50. And then for the top and bottom padding, this needs to be set at 15. Next, we're going to come over here to the box shadow. And we're going to choose this one here. So let's start with our blur strength. So we're going to set this at 55. And for the spread strength, this is going to be set at minus 4. And then finally, we're going to come over here to our shadow color. And I'm going to add my value between the brackets. And then we're going to save. Okay, so over here to the right, we need to add our image. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for my image module. I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to click here in this area. Click on upload an image. And then we're going to save. Next, we need to add another row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And this time, we're going to have three columns. And then I'm going to close this for now and then click here on my row settings. Click on background. And then the first thing I'm going to do here is to add a background, background color to column one. And this color is going to be white. And then I'm going to save. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the gradient on the button. So I'm going to come over here to my button settings. Click on design. And then I'm going to right click and copy background gradient. And then I'm going to paste the gradient in the second column. So I'm going to come back over here. Click on background. And then over here on my column two background, I'm going to right click and paste my background gradient. Right, so for now, I'm going to save. And then the next thing we need to do is to adjust our width for this row. So I'm going to click on row settings. Design. Sizing. We're going to make this row full width. And then we're going to click here on use custom width and set this to 2600 pixels. We're going to use the custom cutter width and set this to 1. And then next, we're going to come over here to spacing and we're going to set a custom padding on the top and bottom of zero. So I'm going to add my value here. And then for our column one padding, I'm going to set this to 30, both to the top and the bottom. Right now it's time to add our box shadow. So I'm going to click here on box shadow, choose my style. And then we're going to set our blur strength and this, it needs to be at 61. And the box shadow spread strength needs to be set at minus 20. And then I'm going to save. Okay, so now it's time to add our content. So I'm going to click this plus button to add our first blurb. I'm going to select it. I'm going to come over here to uh, image and icon. Click on use icon and then I'm going to uh, scroll and choose my icon. And I'm going to go with this one right here. Next, we're going to need to set our icon color. So I'm going to come over here to design, image and icon. And then I'm going to click this eyedropper tool and paste my icon color in here. Now over here by default, our icon placement is set to the top. So I'm going to click here on the drop down and set it to the left. And then I'm going to click on use icon font size and set it to yes. So this allows us to adjust our icon. So here I'm going to set this at, set this at 88 for my desktop and tablet. And then for the smartphone, I'm going to set it at 50. So I'm going to click this little icon here, click on the smartphone tab and set this at 50. Because you can see right here is a bit too big. Okay, so that's much better. Next, we need to make some adjustments to our title settings. So I'm going to click here on this brush tool. So for our text size, I'm going to set this at 34. But for the smartphone, I need to set it at 23. So I'm going to click this little icon here. And I'm going to set this at 23 because, it's, again, it's a bit too big. Okay, so that's much better. And then over here, we need to set our font weight to medium and make sure our title font is set to Poppins. Now over here on our line height, I'm going to set this at 2 EM. And then I'm going to go back over here to my desktop view. Right now it's time to go and set our body text. So I'm going to click here again on this brush tool. So for our body text, we're going to set it at 14. And our line height needs to be set at 2 EM. So as you can see, things are really close to the edges here. So we need to add some padding to this. So let's come over here to spacing. We're going to add our top and bottom padding. And we're going to set this at 100. And then the left and right needs to be set at 50. 
Okay, so that's much better. And for our smartphone, this needs to be set at 10 because 50 is a bit too much. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, click on smartphone, and then I'm going to set this at 10. Okay, so we're done for now. So I'm going to save this. And then what we're going to do now is, since we've done quite a bit of work here, we're going to clone this and drag it into the other two columns. So I'm going to do this twice. And then drag the content into position. So as you can see with this one here, the color is a bit too dark on this background. So we need to change these colors here so it can stand out. So let's start by changing this icon color to white. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to access my blurb settings. So I'm going to come over here to image and icon. Okay, so our image and icon is fine. Click on design, image and icon, change this to white. And then for our text, I'm just going to change this from dark to light. And then I'm going to save. Now, to make sure that our menu bar keeps in place within the page design, we need to disable the fixed navigation bar as well. So to do that, we need to go to the WordPress admin dashboard. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm just going to open a new tab here so I don't lose this page. Okay, so next we need to come over here to Divi theme options. So I'm going to come over here, click on theme options. And then I'm going to click on disable fixed navigation bar. And then we can save. So I'm going to come all the way down here and click on save. So now it's time to take a look at our page. Exit Visual Builder. And this is our design. So you can see here the background is also fading into part of our page. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.